and what a prospect we've got in store for you. I'm Jim White, You're going to be bringing you all the action and very happy to be joined by Margaret Fefalova Steyer. As, uh, we've done a number of matches together, Margaret, and uh, we've hooked a good one tonight. Absolutely. Happy to be here with you, Jim. It's going to be a really good match. Yes, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Looking to become, to the best of my memory anyway, the only man to hold three world titles, eight ball, nine ball, 10 ball in succession. And the man standing in his way tonight, Jesus Atencio. And he's on borrowed time. He was down 6-1 to Ko Pin Yi in the previous round. Ended up winning that match 8-7. So he's wow. got to feel like he's on a free roll and a dry break there to start things out. Still a race to eight, and things change tomorrow, Margaret, don't they? Races to 10, we're down to the last 32. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. You know, the longer races, the better. Absolutely, effectively 75% of the field on their way home. 32 players of the 128 that started out. It's actually pretty crazy if you look at the losers round three that's playing right now and um, just the amount of good players that are match up against each other. Oh, I'm sorry, losers qualification this is. It is to get qualified for the last 32 tomorrow. We have Monster Field on the losers bracket. Good speed on the white. Just left the edge of that one poking out. Yeah, and I believe Jesus is going to try the same shot. Try to put the one ball behind the seven and use three, five, and seven as a blocker and send the cue ball up table. Pretty much exactly where it is right now. Oh, he barely avoided the side pocket. He looked awful smooth with his break in practice. He found the sweet spot. He broke three times while I was watching, made a ball every time, and was on the one every single time. And he starts the match with a dry break. Isn't it always the way? Yeah, it is definitely different, you know, when the referees reckon. You have a little bit less control. We all know that the pros can wreck really well for themselves, so especially skilled players like his is. So no wonder he was making balls on the break. Francisco called this one ball, if I'm not wrong, right? I think he went for it. But it was kind of like a two-way shot. If he misses, he leaves a safety. Well, he's left a chance at the one. Just found the gap between the eight and the 10. So the first real open look, far from easy. And you'll see that three at the top of your picture. That ball's in jail for the moment. <coughs> yeah, to be honest, uh, Francisco had such an impressive year. I don't think it will ever be repeated again. Like it's just, just something that nobody's ever done before. He won the US Open nine ball. He won the World Cup of Pool, World Pool Mat, not the World Pool Masters, but the World, World Cup with David yeah, Alcady. World Cup, and then World nine ball, World ten ball, World eight ball. I'm sorry. And now all eyes on him to get the World ten ball title. I know he's been a little under the weather. I was talking to him yesterday. And uh, David Alcady, who was noticeably under the weather and went to and out in this event, very unlike him. Well, they've been spending a lot of time together, so you may see uh, Francisco coughing a little bit like Alcady was. It just seems like there's been a cold bug going around. I know I caught it the first week that I was here, so. So you're telling me that me sitting close to you might just, be dangerous? You don't want to, <laughs> definitely don't want to be too close, trust me. <laughs> That's okay. We have immune system for a reason, so I'm just going to pray that mine's going to work. <laughs> You're going <laughs> to pray it's strong. Yeah. Well, still that three. That's the key ball in this rack. I don't think he has enough angle to break them open. It doesn't look like it. 
I wonder if he's going to draw back a little bit and then thin cut the three ball and try to play a safety. Yeah, wants to have a little extra think about this. Players allowed one extension per rack, 30 second shot clock employed. They've got 60 following the break, but they really do have to get on with things. We've seen one time foul here this week. Could have been so close to a few more. I believe he's going to try to send the cue ball towards the nine. <coughs> so he pretty much have five, six, and nine ball as a blocker. He decides to play it simple, just soft like this and use the five ball. He's left the edge of that three. Very close. Yeah, but it's still not easy, you know. The cue ball is going to travel towards the seven. Then it's going to be pretty challenging to get a good snooker out of it. Let's see what he's going to come up with. These guys are known as one of the best, so. They always seem to find the solution. Yeah, he had that big win, as I mentioned, over Copigny leading up to this match. And Francisco, well, he came here by virtue of an 8-3 defeat to Levan Corteza. Yeah, I think he went at the seven there. Did he call it? He, at the speed he played it, I'm almost positive he went for it, but if he called it, I didn't hear it. Well, he definitely led Francisco an opportunity to take an early lead in the match. Confident shot by Apasar. I'm actually going to go on the website and check the scores for you guys. The match has just started, literally a few minutes ago. So many great matches. Skylar Woodward versus Kondrat Yushchishin on table 10. Kondrat is currently leading 1 to 0. Tyler Steyer versus Morris Nohausen on table two. It is actually stream table on YouTube if you guys want to tune in. Mika Imanin versus Meshko Fortunski. Oscar Dominguez and Radoslav Babica. Petri Makin and Ralph Suke. Great wow. match. Just yeah, it keeps going on and on, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, in this stage of the tournament, there are no easy matches going on at all. Well, that's just the way it should be. Absolutely. 128 players. It's called the World Championship for a reason, right? Best players in the world. Good confidence start from FSR here. Securing that 10 and with it a one nil advantage. But just that mistake in what looked like the attempted billiard on the seven. And as it's been all week, a pretty good crowd here for the evening matches. One of the best players on current form in the world, front and center. And many eyes on Francisco. See if he can accomplish something historic this week here in Vegas. 
I don't know how about you, but I love the TV table setup. The table number one, such a gorgeous LED arena. Yeah, high tech and I mean, makes the players feel special being out there. Rack number two. Beautiful break by FSR. And he's got a shot on the two ball. It's a pretty challenging start of the rack, to be honest. But you know, there's there's a lot of time when there is one key shot of the rack, and then if you manage to figure it out, then the whole rack is pretty much open. Yeah, he's having a look to see if he can take that cue ball over towards the three. Natural path is going to slide it across the bed of the table. Just barely missed the eight ball. Well, possible three eight. He might be looking right down the barrel of it. And he's called the eight. I honestly think that where the cue ball it is right now, it is perfect angle to play this combination. Just gotta control where that three goes. Yeah, that's the most challenging part. He didn't get any luck here. I mean, he can still make it, but it's going to be very tough to get to the four ball. Yeah, safety. Just try and glue that cue ball behind the six. Needs a three to hit a cushion. Uh-oh. And it did not. Wow. It was touchy. Required a deft touch and just a little short. Yeah, it was a good shot. It was a really good idea. But unfortunately, he hit it a little bit too soft. <coughs> oh, this doesn't look good. He might get a little lucky. Yeah, he's raising his hand in apology. See, I think the table slides a lot, so it increases the angle of the first rail. That's where he misjudged it by a little bit. But it's still okay. I know we say it every time, but I feel it's going to be a very close match. These two are <coughs> fighters. Neither of them is going to give up easily. Especially considering that this is to get to the last 32. And if we look at the prize money breakdown, prize money starts from the last 32. The player who wins this match is going to gar be guaranteed $2,000. A little bit and of greenskeeping, sorry, yeah. Margaret. And yeah, head, referee, head referee John Lehman called mm -hmm. in. Yeah, it's uh, it's formidable, isn't it, the prize fund? Yeah, absolutely, and starting from there, it's pretty much double. If you get to the last 16, it's over $5,000. So there's a lot to fight for. Yeah, eventual 60000 to the winner. And both of these players want to stay on course for that. A quarter of a million, the total purse. 40,000 to the runner-up. This is huge. It's a pretty good week's work. The WPA Predator World 10 Ball Championship brought to you by CSI, Q Sports International. They're definitely raising the bar in professional pool. Of that, there is no doubt. That let off from Ruiz. 
pure focus. Really good break by Jesus. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the shot on the one. I wonder if he can play the combination. We just get to get a look from a different camera angle. No, I don't think so, but he can definitely use the nine ball to stop the one ball there and send the cue ball up table for a good safety. This will work too. It's so hard to call the safety sometimes because <laughs> there's so many <laughs> different options how you can play it and really all personal preferences. Well, and plus the angles that yeah. uh, our TV cameras allow us. They aren't always as accurate and they're not exactly what the player sees. Yeah, Man I agree. Many times it looks like a ball doesn't go on our picture and mm -hmm. uh, look at it and it flies in, so. Yeah, talking about flying. <laughs> I don't see cue ball flying up in the air right now. He's calling this one ball, taking his jump cue out. That's a very important shot. I hope he will be able to control the cue ball, and he's perfect. Jesus applauds, taps his knee. It's a great shot. You know, there is one thing to just make the ball, but to be able to draw it back and get a control for the next ball. And there might have been a little message sent there too. If Jesus didn't know it, how well Francisco jumped, he knows now because <sighs> you just alluded to, it's one thing to jump the shot, it's another to jump it with control. Absolutely. And he played that shot almost as well as he would have played it normally. Francisco is one of my favorite players to watch. He has really nice cue action. He has a little bit of snooker background. He plays a lot of snooker back home. And you, you, you can see that. You know, a lot of people mention that our heat jumps up on the ball sometimes. And I'm like, oh, come <coughs> on. It doesn't seem to bother him a lot. I mean, of course, there are like proper fundamentals, you know, that like a lot of coaches teach that you have to stay 100% steel and I just think that if this works for him, why not? Beautiful stroke. Yeah, he really does get that cue ball on a string. Yeah. When he's flowing, he is a force. And that force is back to one in front. The race to eight. And we will be back after a short break. Great to have you back. FSR enjoying a one rack lead, the narrowest of leads. It's been a high quality match. Every mistake has been punished. And he's winding it up here, rack number four. We'll see if he can enjoy some success on the break. 
you can actually see the difference of the stance when the players are breaking the ball they put their body position more like a power stance which gives them the opportunity to put more effort and more speed into the cue ball Plenty of safety options here for Jesus. And we'll see what he fancies. He's fancying to go for it. He fancied the aggressive side. And you know what? He was nicely on the two. Absolutely. That was a bank shot that he'd probably get more times than miss it. I would say that. Yeah, I would say if you set up the bank shot like this in practice, you probably make it eight, nine out of 10 on his level. So it made total sense to go for it. And it could be a costly miss, Margaret. We'll see about that because the six ball is kind of funny, but I think the six eight combination go in the side. But once again, our camera angle. Well, where the five is too. Awkward. You can drop right below it mm -hmm. because after removing this three, the six will pass. Yeah. Certainly into the corner pocket, possibly even to the side. Tough to say. But getting on the five nicely will afford him the positional options. Yeah, he's looking at it right now. Well, he'll survey the situation here closely. That 6-8 looks dead set. He's got a little angle on the five. You can almost get the cue ball wherever he wanted it now. Yeah, I feel like he wants the cue ball as straight as possible to the line of the combination, so then he can just draw back a little bit and leave himself the angle, the good shot on the six ball. He's definitely having a closer look to make sure that he judges everything correctly. Nicely done. And he's got a shot on a six. This is the way he played in Puerto Rico. I didn't get a chance to watch him in Poland, mm -hmm. but every single chance he got in the World 8 Ball Championships, he was punishing. He was relentless. And again, as you'd see, you're still sniffling a little bit, but he really looks calm, collected. He's in complete control of his nerve. Beautiful shot. You know, sometimes people ask me, do pros ever get nervous? Like, you seem so calm all the time. <laughs> I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> I feel like when you get to this level, you gain more control over your nerves. So you're able to not show it so much. But deep inside, we all get nervous. Because, to be honest, if you're not nervous, it, doesn't, it means that you don't care enough. You're not ready. Yeah. No, You're but supposed to be a little bit calm, a little bit calm but nervous. I think that high level of focus and concentration almost kicks in, and yeah. you embrace the pressure. Absolutely. And I think that FSR has found that happy equation. Three one he leads. Yeah, so many people are like, "Well, how do you play under such pressure?" But for these guys, they thrive on it. Like it's. It's a privilege to be out there, and you just got to realize that. It's when that they say you're in the zone. Absolutely. That's when you find that that nice line between composure and concentration. Yeah. Well, he was dry last time, and the failed attempt at the bank from Jesus bringing Francisco back out of his chair. We'll see if he can get a ball off the break now. Yeah, it 
is a mystery. He's putting a lot of power into this break shot, but the balls just don't seem like to go in. Well, Jesus has a pretty easy safety to lock the cue ball behind the two ball. And this might create an opportunity for him to have a comeback. I mean, there is a two rail kick available, but it's still a very, very hard shot. You can see Francisco is using the parallel kicking system to line it up. Yeah, difficult hit this one. And even should he hit it, difficult to get it safe. I wonder which cues he using. It seems like a very beautiful cue. I think it's an icon. Icon 4-5 or icon 4-1, one, one of them too. Yeah, see the reason why he played it uh, soft like this because he wanted to clip the one just barely and get a safety back. But he missed it by a few inches and gave his ball in hand. <coughs> One, two, three, four. You straight forward. Believe it or not, I used to know Jesus since I was like 17 years old. We used to compete at the Juniors World Championship together. And I remember my first Juniors World in China, Shanghai. And yeah, he was like a little boy from Venezuela. <laughs> and everybody was saying that his name sounds like Jesus, you know, because uh, in Spanish language, J pronounces like H. H, yeah. So everybody was thinking that his name is actually Jesus. And people were like, making fun of it and nobody knew him back then but then just a few years ago he stormed into the world stage and he's been rock solid from then on has he come far enough we saw him look to the heavens after he hit that he knew he had to get that cue ball close to the rail is he close enough probably even on the rail Yeah, he does need to use his extension to make sure he has enough time to think about it. What do you do here? Do you play rail first? Try to go for it? It's, uh, it's hard. High risk. Very. Looks like he's, he's actually looking at it. See, again, that camera angle tells us he really can't see enough. He's got 10 seconds left. No extension. Wow, he, he could see it. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's very that's unfortunate. A, that's unlucky. Yeah. That was a great shot, but I suppose played wow. in a manner that he'd rather not have had to play. But boy, he did execute it. That's too bad. That's going to cost him the rack. Absolutely. Yeah, see, that's like the beautiful and the ugly part of this sport yeah. sometimes. Those <laughs> rolls are brutal. It's I mean, they're brutal for you, but then the opponent is just... It's the old nice taking shot. Taking advantage. Find your chair. Yeah, but see, like, you, you can say that he got unlucky, but to be fair, he put himself in this position, right? So now Francisco has got a chance to extend his lead in this match going to be one rack closer to the final 32 of the World Championship. And one match closer to his dream. Which it was one of the sweetest things uh, <laughs> in the world that he did when he won the World Nine Ball Championship and he dedicated his win to Darren Appleton. That was beautiful, Dave. Yeah, Just really. Jump. I Just mean, he's he's a thoughtful man. Tells a lot about 
how big of a heart this young man has. He's got a big game to go along with it. 4-1 he leads and Jesus off to a quick break and we as well. Two minutes, we'll be back. Welcome back to the Rio. Everyone in attendance, we all want to watch history in the making. A lot of spectators, everybody is excited to see who is going to take this match. And if Francisco Sanchez Ruiz survives to the last 32, he'll be one step closer to holding all three world titles. And when I say three world titles, three individual world titles. He and his partner, David Alcady, they've got the World Whirlpool Cup title and the US Open, which is in many people's mind, as difficult to win as any world title. He's already got that one in the bank. Yeah, if you ask any pro what is the hardest tournament to win, the answer probably would be US Open. 4-1 he leads, rack number six. He'd like to take it apart. Here you can see Francisco switched the side of the break because it didn't work for him. So yeah, that's the rule. If it doesn't work for two or three times in a row, it's time to switch sides. And unfortunately, it didn't work this time either. He hitting the one ball in the corner and let's see what he's, he's going to come up with. He needs a really good shot to get back in the match. Yeah, and where do you push here? He so snookered by in the seven. You have to either go for a jump <coughs> or try to kick it in. You definitely cannot push out for a jump when you play against Francisco. And I mean, the one ball is hanging in the corner, so that wouldn't be very good shot in this situation. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Wow. The cue ball didn't even think about falling in. Just dead stopped right in the corner. What a shot. He put a lot of backspin on this cue ball. Otherwise, it would fall right in. What do you do here? Straight in on the two. Yeah, I think even Francisco has to acknowledge that was some kind of effort. I mean, that half of that ball is in the pocket. 
Very unfortunately, he didn't get rewarded much from such an amazing jump shot. Yeah, all you can do is just to play pocket speed, make the two, and play safe on the three. Do you think he might go for a combination? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it goes. We'll see in a second. Definitely doesn't. Cubal behind the five. Well, he definitely left the gap here for Francisco. Yeah, I think his body language tells us he's left a path through to the three here. shot. There was no need to go for it. Beautifully played. Again, tap of the table. He's a real gentleman is Jesus. You can tell. Both of them. Maybe two of the nicest guys on tour, Margaret. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, in the end of the day, if your opponent made a good shot, why wouldn't you acknowledge that, right? That's a great shot as well. I believe the three ball is going to... No, it's perfect. It looked like it would travel further. Yeah, that was a good shot too. <coughs> then he's gonna have to kick at this. Great speed. I love to watch this type of safety battles between two great players. You can learn a lot from this. It's all good laughs between <laughs> these two. It's nice to see them smiling. Just wondering if he called that side pocket. I wonder if that's why the smile. Sometimes I wish that players were mic'd up so we can hear them better. That would be exciting. That can be dangerous though, Margaret. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> because when something go doesn't go your way, we never know which kind of language we're going to hear from certain players. Well, that safety looks like it's bottom of chance. Yeah, such a great kick shot he played on Francisco to get himself back into the match. And he really needs it right now because he's going to be breaking so he can literally decrease the lead by one point if his break is going to work well. Very confident shot in this situation, I would say. I believe he has a slight angle so he can just Stun draw it back to play the 10 in the corner. Perfect speed. Yeah, he's gone through this rack like a whippet. Perfectly played. Pulls one back, still trailing 4-2. But a glimpse of what this young man is capable of. The fact that he beat a world champion in the preceding match. 
should tell us enough, but it's always nice to see it firsthand. Absolutely. I was actually upset I missed the end of this match, Jesus versus Copini. That was a lot. 6 1, he was down in that match. Yeah. <coughs> Came back to win at 8 7. And he broke really well against Ko. Yeah, I feel like on a level like this, if you break works, it's pretty much the key to success. Talking about the break, it seems like Francisco has a chance to extend his lead after this one. I don't know if you remember doing many matches on this table, but I have yet to see anybody enjoy any modicum of success on the break here. I haven't seen anyone put two racks together at any time. And you've got the best players in the world. Yeah, it's pretty sad to be honest. Table's just breaking very difficultly. It is. And it doesn't allow a player to get into a flow and <laughs> string any racks together, which means these players that are very tactically sound that's why you're seeing a lot of the good safety players making their way into the last 32. Yeah, I mean, like we discussed earlier, it's pretty much like changed the game from just break and run all the time to a moving game, safety game. So players, it really showing who is the best all around player because it's not always about break and run. It's about how to find a smart safety, how to kick good, how to bang good, how to come up, uh, come out of tricky situations. Just, just a bit short of what would have been perfect position. Straighter would have been nice, but now he's just got to control that cue ball. I, I'm actually curious if he decides to Stan follow it between the eight and the five, go into the six, or he's going to try to bump the five. Yeah, that was probably the best option. Played, yeah, played that very well. You can't really go wrong with that. You're gonna make sure that you put the six ball closer to the rail and you have a nice angle on the five. I like how he takes the time out and commits to the shot. Yeah, actually, if you watch him playing like two, three years ago, uh, he slowed down a lot. Like his name, a nickname used to be and still is Ferrari because he used to be running around the table like crazy so fast. And actually, he still plays a lot faster but than average players, but this is his slower speed, believe it or not. He used to be very quick, and I remember uh, talking to him. He was uh, admitting that he used to lose a lot of matches because of that, because he was just rushing into the shot. And now his pace around the table changed, and he takes more time for shots, and it helped him a lot. You just got to treat every ball with respect, no matter how easy it is. Beautiful stroke. Yeah, he really is making that cue ball sing right now. Silky smooth. Back with a three rack advantage, 5 2. And he's three racks away to reach into the last 32 single elimination. Races to 10 starting from tomorrow. And a redraw. So all the players that are alive in the last 32, mm -hmm. they'll all be hanging around to see what name's gonna be pulled out of the hat. 
So people who's going to qualify through a loser's qualification, they're going to draw the winners, correct? Correct, yep. David Alcady on the right. They really do support their man, I'll tell you. They're all good buddies and competitive as heck. And he must have caught the monitor on the side and saw that we had him on camera. Hope he's feeling better. Yeah, cameraman, they, they love to show family members or close friends when you're playing. Oh, wow, look at this break. He was like, okay, if it's not working, I'm just going to jump up and put so much power into it. The cue ball barely stayed on the table. That was a great break. Unfortunately, he didn't really get rewarded. He doesn't have a shot on the two. Yeah, and the three. There's the bottom right corner. The yeah, ball's gonna have to get developed as well. Definitely, the three and the seven is tied up. Calling the push out. Yeah, he'll probably get this back. I think so. I think he intended to play it a little bit harder to leave the left edge of the two ball available. Now, what was I thinking? but there's no rewards. You knock this in the side pocket, you're not gonna be on the three, so. Yeah, but the thing is, if he hits the six ball full enough, <coughs> it might travel into the seven and the three to break it open. It's a very risky shot though. But sometimes when you're behind, you feel like you have nothing to lose and you almost have to go for it. He got a roll. He got a roll, raised got, his hand. Got away with it. But you know something, Margaret? Exactly what you said happened. That six <laughs> broke the three out. Yeah. So that was a reasonable shot. It, it made sense to play it. It was just really hard to execute it. Beautiful. Perfect speed control. Nicely done. You know, when you just start playing pool, you always think about, okay, if I'm hooked behind the ball, the goal is just to get a contact. But as you get better, you start taking in consideration which part of the object ball I want to I want to kick at so I can get a snooker back. And this is exactly what these two gentlemen are doing. They are calculating the kick shot so well to make sure they don't leave an offensive shot. A chance here at the two. This goes. Nice shot. Yeah, he's not missing anything. But he's had something in the open. He's buried it. Yeah, I don't remember who I talked to today, but they said Francisco hasn't missed the ball for the last year <laughs> he played. <laughs> that was pretty funny.
We got into that cue ball a little too much there. Well and truly over an intended position. He is looking at the options. Perfect. That will do. He's going to have to elevate to get over the seven. Jesus is known as one of the best jump shots performer in the world, so I have a lot of faith he's going to have a good hit on this one. He called the four, but unfortunately he left it open for Francisco. It's still not easy. I mean, I'm assuming the 5-9 combination is straight in, or close to be straight in, so he can just play a stop shot on the four ball or draw it back just a little bit and play the combination. And after the combination, the five ball is going to travel towards the corner pocket, so he will have a, sh a good shot afterwards. Yeah, he'd like to just draw this back <coughs> just a few inches around where the side pocket is that would be ideal would help lay that combination a little better this is where the straight cue action really comes into play perfect just like you predicted and you know what it even allows him to be able to cue into the white a little smoother with that side pocket right there definitely buys him a bit of room but you're you're right too margaret that five's going to track down to the corner just like that look at this oh he definitely doesn't want it in perfect <laughs> couldn't get any better yeah if he were to make the five it would get a little bit more complicated but i believe he still would be able to manage it no problem he is called the best players in the world at the moment for a reason. I believe he is the world number one right now. He is. He is the world number one. WPA world number one. He's looking to get the cue ball as close to the rail as possible, the short rail get a nice angle in the eight, get to the 10. Perfect. And from there, there shouldn't be any more problems. <coughs> Just play a stop, soft draw shot, get the contact with the rail before the side pocket. this 10 ball Francisco is going to be just two racks away yeah the beat goes on the beat goes on and we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, world number one at the table, and he is dictating the pace here tonight. 6 2. He leads Jesus Atencio. And a ball off the break. One, if it goes by the three, 
ominous signs for Atencio. goes the camera angle clearly illustrating the one passes the three into the corner and Francisco will know that as well it's nice to have such a good camera set up so we can view the table from different camera angles gives our viewers better perspective Perfect speed on the two ball, and he's got an angle. He's got an angle to stun it across the table, leave the cue ball a little bit before the center of the table, I would say, to get a nice angle on the three. Get on the four ball, and from there it's pretty much open. I don't see any more problems. I wonder if it's a little bit too straight on the two ball. That's why he's kind of like second guessing himself, taking more time. Whether he wants to be underneath this five ball. Nope, he decides to play a confidence shot. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that Ruiz is in the zone right now. Don't get many earthquakes in the desert, but nothing short of an earthquake is going to halt this guy's progress. Or maybe a power failure? Power failure with the lights go out? <laughs> I think you could play in the dark. Don't jinx it. Nice cue ball control here by Francisco. And this three balls is going to put him on the hill and break him. And one of the few break and run outs we've seen should he get these three. Well, kind of halfway between the corner and the side. Yeah, he should be fine. He can just play it in the side and float the cue ball all the way for the 10 ball. Like you said, his cue ball seems to be in the string, straight on the 10 ball. He is doing nothing wrong at all. He's got the golden touch right now, the world number one, and he is on the hill, 7-2 over Atencio. <clears throat> he'll break for the last time in the match. And we told you the escape act that Jesus provided us with against Copigny, 6 1 he trailed. He's going to come up with, or have to come up with one better. He's going to escape the clutches of a man looking to win the world eight ball, nine ball, and ten ball in the same year. So let's see the break. Well, he made 
the ball and he's got an opening. He can definitely play this one ball in the side. Yeah, this might be the beginning of the end. I wonder if the three ball goes. Oh yeah, he definitely does. The first shot to start the rack and then everything is pretty much open. Keeping it simple. I love it. It's been a master class performance from FSR. And Margaret, if this is him being a little under the weather, I'd hate to see him playing when he's healthy. Well, you've seen what happened the last year when he was playing healthy, right? <laughs> You know, sometimes when you're sick, you seem to play your best pool just because you focus so much harder. Just to assure himself of the angle on the six to get back up for the seven, eights over the side. You have to feel a little bit for Jesus because he grabbed a tiger by the tail tonight. He didn't do much wrong, to be honest with you. Like, they had really good safety battles back and forth, and I feel like Francisco was just a little bit better today, and then he was able to pull through and extend his lead and never looked back. He never really gave Jesus an opportunity to get back in the match. match like this, when you catch somebody flowing the way that Ruiz is, you almost have to just sit back and admire. There is a lot to learn from this guy. And to be honest, the most important to me is how humble and how good of a person he is. Performance for the ages from the world number one, Francisco Sanchez Riz, the hug. He knows he put on some kind of performance tonight and it was special. We hope you all enjoyed it. We certainly did. Margaret, thank you very much for thank joining you, me. Thank you, Jim. It was a pleasure. It was, it was a great match. It really was. And we've got a lot more pool coming your way the next couple days. I can tell you Margaret's going to be here and so will I. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. But for us, good night from Las Vegas.